Next question. What's it like riding 194, 195 miles an hour for so long? Surreal. It's, it's, it's amazing how quickly you, you acclimatize to that speed and how much thought process or, or bandwidth of thought that you have. You know, so much so that, okay, we're in there. Are your elbows tucked in? Yes. Are your knees tucked in? Yes. Are you, have you got 100% throttle? You know, can you pull it? Are you, are you, is there anything that you're leaving out? Is it there? Can you see the horizon? Can you see where you're going? Can you feel the bumps? All this stuff, your, your brain slows down enough to manage all this and it's still 193, 94, 95, 93, 94. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much down to business. You just get on with the job at hand. Um, there's no real time to be scared, so to speak, but it is pretty surreal. And it's amazing how quickly you can get accustomed to it. Next question. What was the comparison between the 2024 build last year to the bike this year? It was a lot better. We did learn a lot from last year. And one of the things we learned early on, we had a Insta360 camera sitting right beside the clutch. And at the end of a run, I would basically just download my thought process into the camera so it was captured. Because with excitement and adrenaline then the crew coming to pick you up, it's, it's easily forgotten of what actually happened during that run. So I was having verbal downloads every single run uh, last year to make sure we remembered all the little issues. And one of the issues we had was the wind pressure. The bars were too far out and you had so much pressure on your, your upper arms and forearms. Uh, so we did adjust that. We moved the bars in by 65 mil, both sides, um, for this year to tuck a lot tighter into the bike. Um, we changed obviously the wheels. The wheels were a lot heavier, which made sure we wheel spun less and we added more weight to the back end. That was a dramatic change from last year to this year. The bike, the bike's always been stable, but there was so much less wheel spin, um, which meant it was more controllable at speed because we were wheel spinning a lot at speed last year. The data logger shows we're still wheel spinning this year, but it wasn't as dramatic, it wasn't piling into the red line. We also reduced the boost for this year. We, we wound it right back um, just because it was too much. And I think that's also helped. And yeah, we, we've got more data to confirm that of what we did this year. So we did actually continue the, the process of having the camera at the clutch. And I did the same thing um, this year as well just to aid us, so it's all information, it's all good data. But the, the changes we did from the bike from last year to this year has dramatically improved. It was a lot better. And it, it shows the chassis design is great um, for what we need to do with it going forward. Uh, it moves around a little bit, but realistically it's not bad. It's really not bad. Everything looks to be behaving, which is also good. I'm gonna check the temperatures, what they were. Uh, oil temp's good, water temp's good. So yeah, we seem to be... Uh, we seem to be in a good place. Next question. We went out to break records. What else did we break? Well, we didn't break a record. We got very, very close to the record. Um, we did go faster than the record for one run. Um, but that was one of the first major things we broke, um, which was the engine. Um, we were three quarters of the way into the run. It was fast. That, that morning, the bike was just, it was like a, pulling like a train. It was fantastic. The, <laughs> the two and a quarter measurement, which is usually 176, 178, something like that. Um, we were doing 191 at the two and a quarter mark. The two mile, we were doing 170. So we're accelerating so fast up through there. Um, and we suddenly, 194, 195. And actually looked at the speedo and didn't believe it. I thought I was rereading it wrong and seeing it was 180 something, but it was actually 190. Um, it was pulling like a train, it was amazing. Everything was smooth, it was fast, it felt great. And then nothing, just no power at all. Looking back in the day, so a big puff of flame out the turbo, we have moved probably hold a piston. So 
we did coast through the, the three mile, but we still managed to qualify for the record. Our time was 193.2 for one something, uh, and the record's 192.9. So even with the engine blowing up, we coasted through it. But it does mean we can't do a return run because we've blown the engine. Now, previous to that, we did two wheel bearings. Every run we came back, we could feel the wheel, the, the rear wheel was really notching the bearings. Um, so we'd take the wheel out, ship the entire hub out. Bearing in mind, these were a one-off made wheel for this event. So it did have a lot of teething problems. It turns out the, the tube which goes in between the bearings was 0.3 mil too short. Um, it was suspected because we had an issue with the bearing and the dyno. So I did take spares and we shimmed it back up and we didn't have any problems after that. But we did do two bearings. Um, we did the engine, which was a major one. We then put the spare engine in and we blew that one as well. So we did two engines, which probably wasn't better either. We shredded our front tire with assault, but that was still manageable. We broke the two transport wheels on the frame because the bike was coming up and down off the uh, the tail lift of the truck every night, the tail lift's at an angle. Just the, the weight of the bike uh, bent the cheap Chinese made wheels on the on the transport dolly. Um, fortunately, we've managed to source some of them off a very helpful guy in, in Wendover. Of course, we broke another clutch, which is part of the course these days. Now, to be fair, we only broke one clutch and it wasn't dramatic and we only changed a couple of plates in there to get us going again. We got a bit greedy. Um, run one and run two were 191 and change. So we got greedy and wound up the boost and we ended up over boosting it and the clutch just couldn't take, this, couldn't take the stress. So eh, lesson learned, but yeah, we did another clutch. Kind of expected to. So yeah, we broke and we broke hearts obviously because we came back unrewarded with the record. So yeah, we broke a couple of things, not a record. Final question, will we go back? Yes, hands down, yes, we'll go back. Probably not next year, and probably not with the motors that we have right now. Let, if we go back, the bike was originally built for the FIM record which was set with a Ducati engine. That record's 166 miles an hour. We were faster than that when we were doing licensing runs for the SAT event last year. We could have gone back to the FM event and picked up that record, but it just didn't feel like much of a challenge. Just ticking a box where the SAT record of 192.9 seemed a lot more of a challenge. And we were confident issue we could get it. Knowing what we know now with all the data logging that we had on the bike, could we do it? Could we get the record with the, what we have? Yes, but it would need two perfect runs in a perfect salt and a perfect environment for it to happen. Um, one of the things we noticed even on day two is the engine temps were so high because we're just forcing so much out that little engine. Bear in mind that engine is 100, 112 horsepower from the factory and we're running over 190 horsepower out of it. It is under so much strain and even the end of the runs, we see where we see an engine temps of 123 degrees. It's just cooking itself, it really is. There's so much heat generated from what we're trying to do out of that engine. So I'm kind of not surprised it went pop. I'm more surprised it didn't go pop sooner. Um, so, could you do it with what we have? Yes, but you would have to be extremely lucky. And realistically, we could go back three or four times and not be that lucky and get it. So will we go back? Yes. Will we go back with the current configuration we have? No. But we will be going for that record, for sure. But I think the next configuration, the 200 mile an hour uh, goal will definitely have to be part of it. And maybe something a bit more. So that kind of concludes our little salt escapade for 2025. 
and we've now got all the parts back. Got a mountain of unpacking to do and sorting stuff out um, before we even look at unwrapping the bike. The, back, the bikes will all shrink wrapped from being flown back. I do want to get this first engine back in here this week and maybe pull the heads off it just to get an idea of what went wrong with it. I'm suspecting holes in our pistons. It's the way that the failure was and the fact that there's no fluids anywhere lost. There was water lost, but it could have been boiling. Um, I'm suspecting holes in the pistons, but I could be wrong. Second engine is still on the bike. There's a bike show at the start of November. Um, we're going to leave the bike intact until then. We'll put the bike in the bike show and then we'll put the second motor. And we'll see where the hole is. There's definitely a hole there somewhere because it puked oil everywhere. Not just a little bit, it guts the whole lot. So, and there's a hole in the timing belt cover, which is strange, even though the timing belt's on there. So. Something's jettisoned sideways out that motor. Um, it's probably quite spectacular. So hopefully we can salvage parts and make one good motor out of the two. Um, probably sell it. If somebody wants a partially run Ducati 998 motor, let me know. And then yeah, we've got another couple of projects to do in, this, in the workshop. The land speed bike will probably be parked, pushed, pushed to the side for a while. We have a 500cc two-stroke project, which has been quietly working its way in the background, but we need to start uh, on that properly. We have the supercharged 1198 Ducati, which we need to rebuild because we'll steal the ECU and the dash back off the land speed back to finish that again. And then maybe once we get going with that, we'll pull the land speed back out and start fabricating the frame to look at the new power plant that that's going to need for 2027's endeavors. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Um, big thanks to everybody we met on the salt, the, the teams, the crew, the organizers, our crew specifically. Couldn't have done it without you. Um, it's been an absolute ball. It always has been. It's we can't wait to go back. We've just got to get a bike. So until the next time.